The irresponsibility of our elected officials is just uncanny. It's basic economics that are making us all poor each and every day. We're going to talk about that plus what's going on in the condom market. I mean, inventory levels broke out of their winter range a little early. Could this be the answer to the spring buyer's dreams? In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condom markets of the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And we're also going to talk about some very relevant current events. There are some interesting developments in the data for both the condo and single family market. The question becomes, will the trends continue? If so, then it may just be a better spring market than most had expected from an inventory standpoint. Interest rates are going to suck a lot more than expected, though. So I guess that will make up for it. And maybe high interest rates aren't necessarily a bad thing going into the spring market. Maybe they'll actually help tame some of this demand because the demand is making for some crazy scenarios. This week and open houses were like college parties, people fighting to get through the door and only to be shoulder to shoulder once you got inside. One offer situation was 11 offers and the house went for 130 grand over asking price. Another situation had six offers. And that was on an already $1.1 million asking price house. Hey, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. And I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then know I'm here to help. Also, I'm looking to buy houses. Let me know if there are any houses that you're aware of that, well, need that tender love and care. Friends, family members, a random house that you drive by every day and you know it's in shambles. The uglier, then the better. If you know of one, then please shoot me an email or visit cashofferma.com. Let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. Again, nothing abnormal here. We are expecting inventory to just hover along for another two weeks or so. Inventory was up slightly last week and is now down slightly this week. The 2,812 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 4.4% less homes on the market than just 28 days ago and the inventory went down this week but not as much as it did in 2023 if this keeps up then it looks like we could actually cross the 2023 inventory levels in the next week or two we have 101 fewer single family homes on the market today than we did today back in 2023 and 883 more single family homes on the market today than compared to 2022. So here's the story as to why inventory is slowly but surely catching up to the 2023 inventory levels. We listed 660 single family homes this week. That's 75 more units or 12.8% more than the same week in back in 2023. And keep in mind that last week we listed 63 more units as well. So five weeks ago, it was 12% less. Then four weeks ago, it was 10% less new inventory. Then three weeks ago, it was even with 2023. Two weeks ago, we listed 13% more houses. Last week was 10% more houses. And this week, we're now nearly 13% more again. This is an interesting trend that is great news for buyers. The continued new listing year over year could create a situation where we see some inventory bills. And this is a great thing. These stats are telling us that there might be some good news coming. I just personally don't see it though. There's a lot of buyer demand out there. I think this is going to be a crazy spring market that sellers are, well, just absolutely going to love. That four week rolling average is 586 units. This current listing activity is strong to say the least. So we are listing more houses than in 2023, but our under agreement data, it's pretty much in line. We had 702 homes go under agreement, and this was 24 units, or so 3.3% less than the same week last year when 726 single family homes went under agreement. Now we're back over that 700 unit level for under agreement, and maybe this is some of the demand that I'm seeing in the marketplace actually starting to kind of come through to our stats. The four week rolling average is 626 units. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were up by nearly 13%, while under agreements, they were down by 3%. There were 294 single family properties that closed last week for an average sale price of $729,000 and a median sales price of $568,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 3.6% as there were 305 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average price of $671,000. Then that months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a strong seller's market, but the closer that you get to zero, the stronger, more aggressive, 
of a seller's market that it is. Months of inventory actually nudged down slightly to 1.25 months from last week's 1.26 months. The 1.25 months this week is compared to the 1.16 months this week last year. So relatively the same type market. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now we're into the condo market. Now, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about how the condo market was so similar to last year. And for the last two weeks, it's been starting to make a move. We have 1,839 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 53 unit increase from last week's 1,786 units, and it's 3.8% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. But this is where we can really see where I'm talking, what I'm talking about. Last week, we barely eclipsed the 2023 levels, but this week, inventory really made a move. We now have 96 more units on the market today than today last year, 400 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022. The 96 units is a build from the 39 unit difference that we saw last week. The condo market was like a repeat from last year, both new listings as well as under agreements. There were 384 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 339 units. To put this in perspective, the 384 this week is compared to 386 last week. The 384 units listed was 19 units or 5.2% more than 365 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. Well, under agreements finally showed us something a little different than last year. Last year was a little surge this week, though, and we didn't see that this year. This week, we put 329 units under agreement. This 329 units was 49 units, or 13% shy of last year's numbers, when we put 378 condos under agreement. Talk about a tight range. Three weeks ago, we put 319 condos under agreement, and then two weeks ago, it was 335 units. Then last week, it was 326, and now it's 329 units. That four-week rolling average, that's 315 units. A lot of numbers. So 5.2% more listings that came on the market when compared to the same week last year while selling 13% fewer condos. There were 129 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $625,000 and a median sales price of $480,000. This same week last year, there were 136 condos that sold. So sales levels were down by about 5%. Months of inventory had actually ticked up to 2.03 months from last week's 1.92 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory of 1.69 months this week, last year. Any chance that you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channel. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Oh, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you like the content, I truly appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates though, because you might as well start embracing the suck. It's not going to get any better on the interest rate front anytime soon, and it could very well actually get worse. Ultimately, it wasn't a bad week for interest rates. They went down. So what's all this bad news about? Well, it comes back down to inflation again. The consumer price index came in hotter than expected. And here is the big issue. It's what is called the super core part of the data set that soared. As an example of some of the super core inflation, rent inflation went up 6.09% in January. Shelter up 6.04%. 3.1% year over year isn't the end of the world, but inflation, it's not done. I've been saying this. It's going to continue to go up. Continued inflation means that we as Americans continue to get poorer and poorer each and every single day. And it's all thanks to those rich men north of Richmond. And this is just what irritates me. This inflation is 100% being caused by the expected a $1.6 trillion budget deficit. People don't seem to care about the deficit and it drives me up a wall. Many people do, but those idiots in Washington sure go. The government is printing money to fund that $1.6 trillion deficit. That printing money is the inflation that we are seeing. It is the government that is making you and I poorer each and every single day by eroding our savings. What's a proof that it's the government? One of the idiots that orchestrated the high inflationary run, Jerome Powell, said this week that, and I quote, I would say this, in the long run, the U.S. federal government is on an unsustainable fiscal path. You don't have to go any further than looking at this article to see, well, it's not the consumer. Again, it's the government. The article states that household debt tops 17 
and a half trillion dollars in Americans, well, they're feeling the strain. 212 billion of that 17 and a half trillion came from the fourth quarter of 2023 alone. The article states it's clear that Americans have used credit cards to keep up with bills as price inflation ate up real earnings. But here is what gets really crazy. Aggregate savings peaked to 2.1 trillion in August 2021 thanks to the lockdowns and government stimulus. Americans could literally not spend their money, so they were saving. As of June, that aggregate savings is estimated to be 190 billion, meaning that Americans have chewed through $1.9 trillion in savings in about two and a half years. Like I said, we're getting poor thanks to these disastrous fiscal policies. I spend time on this hoping that the dots are gonna connect and that maybe enough of us will take it seriously, which will make the idiots down in Washington make some tough decisions and actually do their job. Because tough decisions of our own, well, unfortunately, they're coming. U.S. companies talk layoffs like never before. In the most recent rounds, company earnings calls, the article is quoted as saying that U.S. companies are discussing cost control, in other words, layoffs, on earning calls at a record rate. It's all about to get a lot worse. It isn't if an economy that is propped up by government spending will collapse, it's when. And by the way, the crazy part about all of that, continued high inflation means the deterioration of the dollar and higher prices, including real estate. You want to hedge against the high inflationary environment? Buy gold and real estate because renting sucks. As the folks who had a 6.09% increase in their rental prices in January. Meanwhile, us folks who own our house and have a fixed mortgage, we didn't see any change. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs again? It's Jeff Cho. Whether you are looking to buy or sell for the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I would truly appreciate you passing along all of my contact information. Now, you can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. We'll find all of our contact information right down there. Um, in the description below. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section or reach out to me. But until next time.